So welcome back to a brand new episode of the Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode here in MLB The Show 16. So it is the home opener here in Toronto, Ontario, taking place at the Rogers Centre of course. And it's the Boston Red Sox taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. The Red Sox are a division rival here in the AL East. They've been rivaling the Jays for years, with starting pitcher David Price heading to the Boston Red Sox last offseason. It was tragic, but it seemed like the Jays did not want to re-sign him. But, but David Price, he's not starting this game. They have the 27-year-old Rowanus Elias, 6'1", 190 pounds. He's taking on Aaron Sanchez, 6'4", 200 pounds. He's only got two years here in the league. But Aaron Sanchez, Sanchez is our starter for this game. But Boston, they got a speedy team with shortstop Xander Bogart starting, starting them off. They have the DH Hanley Ramirez, David Ortiz, Big Poppy, Wookie Betts, and so on. They have a very good lineup. They have some pretty good power hitters with Ortiz there. He can hit tons of home runs. He hit 37 last year. He's going to hit way more this year. But we have Aaron Sanchez, the 23-year-old starting for us. He's tall and he's very good. Played very well for the Jays here in the spring training in real life. And he's going to be a part of the rotation in real life for the, for the Jays. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Aaron Sanchez can bring to the table this season for us on the game and in real life. To start this game off, Aaron Sanchez, he's hitting that. They're getting, he's inducing that ground ball at third base to Josh Donaldson. And we easily get that out at first base with Curtis Colabello. So this game went really well for us. Really good. And they're in the home opener, but we go and hit Hanley Ramirez. I don't like him there in this game, but we go and hit him for that one walk. But Aaron Sanchez, we induce a broken bat, and we get that out at first. That thing was, we always have a broken bat in the first inning. I don't, I have no idea why, but last episode, another broken bat. In this episode, another broken bat, but for the Boston Red Sox. Our lineup, we have the speedy center fielder, Kevin Plar leading us off. And then Josh Donaldson, Jose Batista, Edwin Carnacion, Troy Tulowitzki, Chris Colabello, Russell Martin, Evan Travis, and the Canadian Michael Saunders. Michael Saunders played really well for us this game, but we have Elias in at, in at starting pitching for the Boston Red Sox. But Kevin Pillar played very well for us, but at his first at bat, he grounds out to Dustin Pedroia for the easy out at first. We did that a lot today, but we did some pretty, made some pretty good plays at the plate. But there's Jose Batista looking as he gets struck out by Elias. But on this play, Troy Tulowitzki, he hits it and it's a, he's going deep down the gap at right center field. And it's going to go down the stand-up double. A beautiful play by Troy Tulowitzki hitting it right in that gap. Troy Tulowitzki wasn't really hot going into this game, but he finally gets that double on the season. His first double of the season, and he's going to be an integral part of this Toronto Blue Jays season. He was obviously acquired last season by Alex Anthopoulos at the trade deadline or around that. From the Colorado Rockies, in exchange for a few minor leaguers, but it was a really good trade, and it's going to benefit us for this season, definitely. And now we have a man finally in scoring position. Hopefully, Russell Martin can finish us off. Russell Martin gets on base for the first time today, and he gets a single, driving it right in that gap in between first and second, and he's on. We needed to get batters on in this game, which we did a little bit last game, but it was one big thing we have to do against the Boston Red Sox. They're a very good team, and within one inning, they can kill you with their offensive firepower, but we get on the board first with Russell Martin getting his first ribby of the day, driving in Troy Tulowitzki for that one nothing lead. But there's Devin Travis looking as he gets struck out by Elias. Elias had a lot of home strikeouts today, but Aaron Sanchez played very well for us, picking off that corner and striking out Bosch. That thing was awesome. That, I think that was a curveball, but that just popped in there for that strikeout. But here's the show track showing Aaron Sanchez is good at bats. We're going fast pitches, then slow pitches, fast and slow. We go and strike him out. That's what we did all day long, and that worked against the Boston Red Sox. Let's get a replay on that strikeout pitch right there by Aaron Sanchez. Just picking the corner right there. Bottom right corner, and that's how we do it here in Toronto. But on this bat, bat Michael Saunders goes out swinging for that strikeout. We struck it a few times today, but you got to do that in order to get some wins. Here's that awesome strikeout pitch by Elias. He had that killer curveball that killed us so many times this game. That curveball was insanely good. It was slow, but it can just kill you. On this play, Kevin Pollard's up the bat. It's going high and deep. Get up, get up, and it is gone. Kevin Pollard goes yard on his second half out of the game, bringing the Blue Jays a 2-0 lead against the division rivals, Boston Red Sox. An awesome home run 
by Ho but Kevin Pillar getting that solo shot against the Boston Red Sox, and we're up 2 nothing. We need leads against Boston, as they can come back at any inning they want, but we get that solo shot with Kevin Pillar. 382 feet, he goes yard. I was surprised to actually hit a home run with Kevin Pillar. Just due to how much power he has in this game, like he hits a few, a few home runs per season, like around 14 per season for the Jays last season, but you don't really expect this score in a video game. P the players you, see, you assume to hit home runs are with are Batista, Edwin, Troy Tulowitzki, and obviously Josh Donaldson, the bringer of rain, but Kevin Pollard goes yard, and that pitcher is ticked off. You can see it right in his eyes as he watches that ball sail right over to Rogers Center, and now we're leading 2-0. Buff to bat is the man Jose Batista, and he goes right in that gap between third and the shortstop just for that one base hit. Jose Batista, and that was actually a really good well placed hit right there, right past the third baseman, and we're on base. Well, in this play, Edwin he drives it right down center field, and Jose reaches second first, second base, and Edwin reaches first. An awesome play by Edwin, and they go. Xander Bogarts goes and fumbles the ball right there. That's sad. You can't be doing that, but... And now Boston Skipper is going out to confront Elias, as he is rattled in his confidence right now. He is not confident, as he just let up two home runs this game so far to Pilar and Batista. We actually hit... We destroyed Elias here in that inning, but he goes, and he ends the inning right there. Just got demolished that inning there, but he finally gets out of it. But on this play, Josh Jones picks up, picks up the ball and throws the first to get that out. That was close. Dustin Pedroia almost reaching base right there, but... Dustin Pedroia is a dangerous man to leave on base, and you do not want him to be on there as Boston can easily drive him home for that run. Aaron Sanchez had a no-hitter going on right there through five. And that ends Aaron Sanchez's no-hitter through five. I can't believe he had a no-hitter going. I didn't even notice it until the fifth inning, but in this play still was up to bat. It's going high and deep. Left center, left field, and that ball is gone. Right over Michael Saunders' head, and now it is a tie game, two to two against the Toronto Blue Jays. I told you the Boston, the Boston Red Sox could come back at any inning, any inning they want, and they did that right there, hitting, going yard against Aaron Sanchez for his second hit of the day. Aaron Sanchez is playing well until this inning, but he's still playing well as he gets a strikeout right there against Brock Bosch. An awesome strikeout right there, and now he's trying to end, the, end this inning before it gets even worse. On this play, Xander Bogert's up to bat, and Aaron Sanchez, he induces the ground ball right to the second baseman, and we get that out there. Devin Travis getting that assist right there on that play. I think Devin Travis is up for uh, a gold glove for second base right now. I'm pretty sure. But Jose Batista up the bat. And he's going high and deep. Left center field. And that ball is gone. Jose Batista. He's a home run machine. Hitting 50 in 2011. And he starts it off here with his first home run of the MLB season. In his first game at Rogers Center. And Rogers Center, it's a pretty good arena. Pretty good stadium to hit home runs, and Jose Batista gets his first at home on the season. Jose Batista, I, was, I thought for sure Josh Donaldson hit one before him, but Edwin hit one last game we played, and now Jose Batista going yard. Second home run of the, of the day, uh, obviously Kevin Pillar hit that solo shot earlier in the game, but Jose Batista, we get the lead 3 2 against the Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox are a really hard team to score against with their awesome starting pitching, but Batista uh, just homered that one right there right over the wall and that thing is a thing of beauty right there the pitcher is obviously not happy right there as he hangs his head in shame after seeing Batista walk around the bases it's too bad it wasn't a bat flippable moment as it wasn't in the bottom of the ninth or anything but it would have been awesome to see him get a bat flip right there the ump is calling that strike zone very loosely there as that ball should have been a ball but Tulowitzki's ticked off and I understand why that is a strikeout right there but not in my books should have been a ball right there but who really cares Chris Colabill up to bat, and he hits it left center field, but it goes right by the left fielder. And he's running, and he's going to get a stand-up double. I don't know why the, the left fielder even dove for that. That didn't really make any sense. But jumps, goes right over him, and now we have a man on second. In scoring position, we need that against Rowan S. Elias, as he is a really good pitcher, but he's getting up there with 82 pitches in this, in this game. So they might be taking him out soon, but... Chris Colabello got lucky there as the left fielder just dove for it. I don't know why he did that. He kind of just slid into it. Didn't really make too much sense. He probably would have got it anyway if he's standing up. But through six, we are up three to two. We need to hold this lead against the Boston Red Sox. But Aaron Sanchez, he's getting tired. But this ball is going high and deep left field. 
but Michael Saunders makes that catch on the warning track, at least partly on the warning track. We were really close to get they were really close to getting that home run, tying it up right there, but we gotta probably take out Aaron Sanchez, and we are gonna do that right now. As Aaron Sanchez has pitched 102 pitches in this game. He had a no-hitter through five. Obviously he gave up that two home two two run shot in the left field and the fifth, so we have to go Aaron Sanchez. If he had a no-hitter going, then he probably would have kept him in, but he had 102 pitches, so he pr he's probably getting pretty tired. We're bringing in the lefty Aaron Loop, and on his first at-bat, he induces a, a fly-out right to Troy Tulowitzki for the second out of the inning. But on this play, he induces another fly-out right to Russell Martin, and now we're going to end the inning. Going to the seventh inning, we need to go and produce some extra runs against the Boston Red Sox. But they're bringing in Anthony v Vivaro, who's a pretty good pitcher, but... I don't know, we'll see. And on this plate, Kevin Pillar strikes out, but he's running to first base on that wild pitch, and he's gonna get there. He strikes out, but he still gets to first base, and we have a man on first. Two outs, but it continues the inning, and that's what we need against, I guess, that's what we need against Boston Red Sox, but it doesn't matter anyway, as Josh Donaldson goes down swinging, and now that ends the inning. Top of the eighth, we're watching Loop just strike out people like crazy. On that plate, he caught the guy looking right there. He had no idea what was going on there. He looks drunk as that ball sails right through the strike zone for that strikeout. But Aaron Loop played very well for us. As he catches Hanley Ramirez just swinging right there. That was nowhere near the strike zone, but he goes down swinging. And we're going to the bottom of the eighth. That was a thing of beauty right there. I don't know Aaron Loop even got him to swing. As Aaron Loop is celebrating after that one. Loop is actually a very good pitcher in this game. And I could recommend getting him if you do. But Aaron Loop, that lefty. He was throwing sinkers all day long, and they were accurate too, but Jose Batista goes down swinging in the bottom of the eighth. You don't really need that right now. We need to produce some extra runs. Patulo's up to bat, and he hits it right past the third base, and it's going down for that base hit. That easily could have been a double if he had Patulo had a little bit more speed, as he has a 54 speed rating in this game. But right past Pablo Sandoval, he went diving for that one too. It's pretty funny. He just goes diving, and he misses that ball. That's hilarious. As we did, we did that a few times with Batista going right past Sandoval. So maybe Sandoval needs to go and rethink a few things. But on that play, Chris Colabello goes down swinging up high. I don't know why he swung at that, but we're going to the top of the ninth. We're keeping Aaron Loop in because I forgot to warm up Osuna. But he's going to do another fly out right to left field. Michael Saunders obviously gets that put out. And now it is now 1 out in the top of the ninth. We need to keep this going. Your loop needs to stay sharp in this at-bat, but it's going high and deep, way back, back, back. But Michael Saunders makes that catch. That was so close. Warning track. He could have tied it up right there, but Sandoval's up to bat. And he hits it right to the second baseman, Devin Travis. And we get that out to end the game. So the Jays win it. 3-2 against the Boston Red Sox, a division rival. We needed that win, but now we've won two in a row. Obviously winning against the Rays in that game last game, but... We get the win with Aaron Sanchez obviously getting that win, pitching six innings, allowing two hits, that one home run, and Aaron Sanchez had no hitter through five innings. It was so close, but Aaron Lou provides us with, with that save today after pitching 2.2 innings and getting us a few strikeouts, I think three strikeouts on the day. But Aaron Lou played very well for us, helped us close out that game in order to get that win against the Boston Red Sox. We didn't even have to play the bottom of the ninth as we obviously won it before there, but on the day we had eight hits, and the Boston Red Sox had two. We obviously win that first game at Rogers Center this season. We need to try and keep a decent home record, but Kevin Blar is your player of the game. Four at-bats, one hit, one run produced on that one home run, so he gets, obviously gets one ribby on the day. Kevin Blar playing very well. He played really good in the outfield and on the batting sheets as he is your player of the game. The awesome player card right there. But Kevin Blar going yard, and I think the third inning, in order to get us that one nothing edge against the Boston Red Sox. He started, off, started our offense off today, and that's what helped us win this game. Without Kevin Pollard's offensive help, we probably wouldn't have won this one. We get the win here today at Rogers Center, but all in this episode off right here, so make sure to like and subscribe for more Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.